Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get rid of this kind of displacement artifacts, which they look like a pixel stretching. So many artists are facing this problem in their material presentation, especially. So to get rid of this, I'm going to show you some techniques, some different methods to achieve that smooth look between the gaps of pixels where the pic pixel stretching is happening. So let's test this one, the bricks material that I created recently. So I'm increasing the, the scale too much so we can see all the stretching is going. Let's take a look at this one. You can see some stretching here. And here in this place, same for this cliff material. Too much stretching. So first of all, let's start using the auto levels. Okay, let's start with this one. So to select where the pixel stretching is happening, so let's use the shadows node. Think it here. Increase the shadow distance a bit and decrease the edges softness, which controls all the gaps here. 0.5 is good. So let's go with 10 for now. Uh, the second pass, second pass is the edge detect. Let's plug that here. So edge roundness to zero, edge width to one, and increase the tolerance and change the output format. So let's make this absolute and change it to HDR which means 32 bits per channel. And let's invert both of these. So let's create a second method, which is similar to the edge detect, using the high pass grayscale. Let's reduce this radius. The darker values are like seams which means where the pixel stretching is happening so 1.2 is i think it's good so let's use the histogram select to select the darker values like this all right i think this one is good and auto levels to fix the histogram add a blend mode and switch grayscale to switch between this one and this one all right Change the method to add linear dodge. So the goal here is to blur the stretching pixels. So add a non-uniform blur grayscale. So this is the blur map. And the grayscale value is going to be the height map. All right. Let's add a switch grayscale again. Okay. You can spot the difference here. So we are getting less pixel stretching. 
so you can adjust more of the parameters you can change the method here and choose what's best for you you can adjust the shadow samples okay so let's look from far away and switch this before and after before and after so now when we decrease the scale value of the material you can see better result so here you have the stretched pixels and now we got rid of them so look at the details here so we are just fixing the pixel stretching like this so let's try it on another material okay this is the height map and this is the base color all right you can spot the difference so you can play around with the intensity depending on your material to get the desired look so let's change the shape here so let's try this on the first basic material So you can see without it, without using it, and after using it. Which is a huge difference, so you can use this on a lot of kind of materials. So using all these nodes, so you can create a, a utility node, which makes it easy for you later to use it in your materials so let's delete these guys here add an input node input grayscale this is gonna be the the input height map so let's add an output and let's add another input input color so this one is for the color map non-uniform blur plug this to the color and this one to the blur map I think point 45 is good. Now let's expose the parameters. So let's expose the intensity map. and expose this switch parameter 2 and the shadow distance and 
and the edges softness so these are the main parameters So when you save it, change this to relative to parent before you publish the SPSAR file. I'm gonna save this. Okay, so after we created the SBSAR node, so now we can just plug the albedo to its input and the height map. So here you can just uh, play around with the blur and intensity, choose the value you want and switch between the method one or two. You can adjust the shadows distance and the edges softness as you want to get the desired look of your material, depending on which material you make, maybe if it's rocks or trees or whatever. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you find this useful, there will be more tutorials in the future, stay tuned for more stuff and have a great day everyone.